Hello and good afternoon, everyone, and a very good morning to everyone joining us from the West Coast. My name is Malay Obadhya, and I'm the Chief Customer Experience Officer at SalesChoice. Welcome to the latest, latest edition of the Predictive World Forum, where today's webinar will focus on securing more sales and making your plan. Now, why is that important? With less than a month to go before year end, a lot of us are faced with a question on how do we make our plans? And like always, we thought this would be an opportune moment to bring together voices of leadership, experience in this industry who know how exactly you achieve these objectives. So let's begin. First, few housekeeping notes. Uh, first of them being our repository. The Predictive World series is something you can find on demand on our website at www.saleschoice.com. Here you will find podcasts, webinars, video libraries with a host of other thought leadership from industry experts with tons and tons of experience on every given topic around AI and sales. And we welcome you to visit, enjoy these views, and let us know if there's anything you'd like to see in the future. Today, besides me as your host, we are joined by Dr. Cindy Gordon. She's the CEO of Sales Choice, as you well know, and like always, she'll be talking to an industry expert whose name speaks for itself. Uh, she's Reem Gideon, and she is a true growth and transformational leader, if there ever was one, with experiences in several notable companies, including as the SVP of Global Customer Success and Partnerships with LifeWorks. She has also worked at the likes of uh, CompuCom as the GM of Canada and VP there, and she has guided literally hundreds of sales executives and teams on exactly how to achieve the sales targets and bring in some best practices, particularly with regards to enterprise selling. Reem, we are honored to have you with us today. And I would let you say a quick hello to our audience and I will turn things over to Cindy to take it from here for what should be and will surely be a promising and engaging discussion. Thank Thanks, you, Reem. Go ahead. I, I was going to say thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here and talk about my favorite topic. Go ahead, Cindy. Thanks, Reem. Uh, you know, Malay, you really set the stage well. Uh, myself, having grown up in sales over the years and been uh, a sales professional at Xerox, uh, you know, the beat is on right now, and it's definitely that 30 day crunch mode where every second counts. And in the number of calls you're likely getting from managers or senior leaders in terms of what you can pull through in the next only three weeks, right? So focus is at a critical time that every second counts. So we wanted today to really share some best practices based on what Reem's experience, maybe some of the things that I've learned over the years, and also some of the value add that sales choice can bring to the table to help you secure more sales and make your plan. So we've got three key questions that we're going to discuss with Reem today. Uh, the first one is how you can get more out of your pipeline by focusing on the right deals, particularly with um, mid-market, I'd say sales professionals where they may have, you know, 30 to maybe even 80 different account cycles that they're pushing and moving on. You know, you can really get lost sometimes by being attracted to the next shiny uh, toy or relationship. And it seems like it's the right pathway, but there may be other things below the surface that you really don't appreciate yet. Obviously, when you're involved in a sales cycle, there are opportunities to correct yourself in terms of the how you're sailing down the river and maybe other coverage strategies you could take or corrective actions to increase your odds. And more importantly, I think is always to be alert, tracking the effect and was getting coaching feedback to ensure that you actually can secure more sales. So that's the topic for the day and final countdown is well underway. So Reem would love to hear, first of all, your perspectives on how you can get more out of your pipeline by focusing on the right deal and, and the challenge of focus um, in these challenging times, Reem. Thank you so much, Cindy. Really, when you think about closing the gap and it's year end, even quarter end, I think organizations, all enterprise organizations are looking at 
How do you make sure that on a quarter over quarter you're closing that gap? It's really focusing on the right opportunities. It's making sure that you're looking a bit on how qualified they are, where they are in the sales cycle. Have you created a compelling event? Does the customer agree to the fact that uh, these opportunities or, or what you're selling will deliver on that, uh, on the challenge that they're trying to address? So it's a combination of qualifying, making sure you've done the research, uh, making sure that you're at a stage that it's not you're just creating a demand. Because we're now thinking about not strategically, we're thinking about how do you hit your numbers? How do you make sure that you can close them? And how are you spending immediate time on the right opportunities that can close your gap this quarter and this year? So I talk about win plans. I talk about making sure that the value messaging is there, making sure that there's a compelling event that drives the client to make a decision. You know, waiting or <laughs> is not an activity. It's one of my favorite statements. Uh, at the end of the day, you need to move it forward. And how do you make sure you've prioritized not just your sales team, but also all the support folks that we know in an enterprise deals, how, how did you prioritize them or focus them on the opportunities that will close your number or exceed your number, right? You've got legal, you've got solutions, you've got uh, your SMEs or subject matter experts and your professional folks that you need to bring in all to make sure that they're helping you close that opportunity, the most qualified and the right one, Cindy. So Reem, just to maybe do a little bit of a deeper probe on, on your, your excellent perspectives of the importance of the, you know, this conversations. Are there sort of insights in regards to uh, you know, having enough coaching time um, you know, to drive that knowledge when there, are, there, is, there can often be a lot of turnover in sales uh, teams? Um, any thoughts on that, uh, Reem? So that's where you really need sales management constantly involved, supporting, enabling, helping, making sure that these conversations uh, are happening and the pre-planning is happening, right? At the end of the day, no customer will buy unless there's a need. And how do you make sure that your product and services are the ones that are best fit or you've portrayed truly uh, that they will address what clients need? Um, at the end of the day, we all know that our buyers are more knowledgeable today than ever. So that truly shifts the role of a salesperson, more advisor, more about creating that value and adding value and helping them make that decision. Yeah. And I really appreciate the perspective on um, identifying a compelling event uh, that they can relate to in, in their language and also you know, they don't know one really wants to be sold to anymore. And <laughs> it's about a conversation, bringing value, interest, insights, maybe showing relevance to appreciating that you're informed about their organization. And so there has to be a thoughtfulness in the dialogue much deeper than uh, we probably had, you know, earlier, even my career, right? Um, so um, just a couple of words on sales choice um, for those of you that are here. Uh, one of the things that we were concerned about in the evolution developing our software was could we in fact if there were large data sets be able to prioritize the opportunities based on signals signals that are coming in from you know the lead demand gen um, system insights that are coming in on the pricing the opportunity type and to essentially surface up what the best pathways are that we believe from the science of the history that they can help really focus their time and effort. So this is just a simple screenshot, you know, where obviously you might be in Salesforce, you're gonna get a particular call out on a sales gate and we may align uh, in terms of the software. In this case, we do in terms of it's an A um, being an opportunity to target and a prediction. And there's variance there in terms of uh, predicting whether opportunities are A's, B's or C's. So making it very easy for sales professionals to sift through and you know, see the reasons as well for a win or a loss. So let's continue on. Um, so Reem, let's, 
you know, envision that lots of sales cycles, you're really used to the beat. You've got lots and lots of teams that may be doing globally or maybe dealing in a particular industry or even a channel. What are some, when you, when you see things going awry and you know there's a big ticket, what are some of the, you know, main corrective actions that you've noticed over the years that can really increase, improve your odds of success? Um, you know, Cindy, can I go back to what you showed just a second? And I think this is so important when we all think about selling and, and we call it the art of selling. And there is an art to selling. But I also think selling on its own as an art is not enough. There's a whole element and aspect of the science of selling. And that is how do you make sure that your, uh, your limited resources, how do you make sure that your time is spent on things that will end with the results? How do you improve, improve your probabilities? And I love that aspect of having that data uh, to predict or help predict uh, success. So thank you. I, I love it. And I think this is a huge um, you know, value for any organization. Um, let me come back now to your question. Um, and I think about what needs to happen to make sure that you bring something in. It's how do you accelerate that deal? If it's stagnant, what needs to happen? How are you constantly looking at where your opportunities are? And you truly have a sales force that is giving you that visibility because I'm sure we'll get into this. Um, you might need to shift resources, uh, bring in executive sponsorship, uh, shift your time and focus as a leader on uh, that customer or that opportunity to help them, um, potentially coming in and, and looking at what can you uh, provide this client as an incentive. And I really hate uh, talking about things from a perspective of, um, you know, incenting a client to close, to, to, to give you the business, but it's more about how do you make it a win-win. So when you look at uh, an opportunity that is stagnant, that is critical for your organization, and I'm hoping that your teams, all, all your teams are working on opportunities that are critical and they're going to close. Otherwise, why are they working on them? It's uh, potentially... Uh, shifting resources, shifting the lead, um, bringing them in and, and figuring out, do we need to do another session to map uh, fundamentally the pain points or what needs to happen immediately and what urgency and timelines do we need to track towards? Yeah, that sense of urgency is uh, and that passion, right? And that energy force. One of the things that, that I've seen, uh, Reem, especially in a lot of Salesforce infrastructures, that particular deals that have a particular dollar value, they're automatically flagged so that, ma that management can secure more coaching, um, you know, the resources can secure more coaching from management. On the flip side, I've also seen how the sales professionals uh, want a sandbag where they don't want to put in those opportunities so that they don't get as much support. How do you how do you manage those kinds of dynamics in terms of the imperative to value leadership coaching um, versus that the old hunter style right which was less collaborative wants to be more secretive and and um, you know are are they a dying breed <laughs> what do you think I don't know if they're a dying breed you'll have everything <laughs> I think um, I have to say that um, I'll call I won't call them sandbaggers Cindy I'll call them over under committers <laughs> and over committers because you also fall into a trap of folks that are constantly over forecasting and they don't hit the number that's another one of those so they're both um, uh, at the different end of the spectrum and and really uh, when your team might be five that's easy to manage you'll get to know them but as your team grows you need another mechanism to know or manage or, or demonstrate uh, really at the end of the day that the, hitting the numbers is not just a visibility as a leadership. It helps you also as an individual contributor understand where you should focus and when you need help and where you need help. So this is where you're so close and you don't lose perspective that the role of sales management is really to coach, enable, remove obstacles. And that's where you're involved to help and support 
hit and exceed the numbers. We all want our salespeople to make more money. We all want organizations, uh, all of us to hit uh, bigger numbers and over exceed on what we're doing. Yeah, especially in the final countdown, right? Where the every second and every pressure point counts. So just to build um, one of the things that we've learned in our journey, it's not enough to do A, Bs and Cs and give a predictive score. You also have to explain the reasons why so that area called guided coaching, uh, where the patterns can surface up. So whether it's the win factors in terms of the spread of the opportunity to know that this particular opportunity type, you know, that you're actually not in the range um, because you're below um, the range, anything historic in the past has been sold. So it could be your price point is too low in that particular offering against the competitors. So that, you know, it's not always the least uh, costly cost factor that customers select from. They also want to ensure that they're getting the quality of customer service support. So often you can make mistakes of constantly discounting and not realizing that you actually are increasing your odds of losing that opportunity you know, the price discount ranges can come into type or even the opportunity type. So those are some of the things that we try and surface in every client's unique data set as to what the patterns are that are giving insight to the, uh, those predictive scores. Um, so Reem, continuing on, let's look a little bit more about, you know, obviously sales, um, you know, that are complex enterprise sales, uh, which is obviously where we specialize more in the B2B side. And, you know, the importance of tracking and communication. Uh, there's obviously a lot of concern of sales professionals spending far too much time documenting and not having real conversations with real people. I was actually talking to one of uh, the senior VPs that we know quite well in sales in a large logistics company. And they were quite concerned that about 50 to 60% of their time in enterprise sales is being locked into administrative overhead. So what are your thoughts in terms of how to balance things out for the effectiveness that you need, um, but also to not lose sight of what's really important and those are real conversations with real customers? Um, Cindy, I think when I first started in the field, I would say we used to do things on potentially spreadsheets. Now I'm aging myself. We've got tools, we've got capabilities uh, today that allow you to truly um, enter at least the data, uh, track it through and understand what's happening. And, and it really, I think at some point you and I were chatting and you said data in, data out, right? At the end of the day, the integrity of that data is, is critical. So this whole coaching, this whole aspect of making sure that your sales team is, uh, it's, it's not even investing because that's their job and responsibility to enable you and give you that visibility, but it's also for themselves. They need to know where they are, right? This, this, this is the whole ability for an, a sales rep looking at it from, a, from their value. It's their book of business. It's, uh, it's the insights that they can get. You have to track. It's not even... A, uh, something that we'd like them to, it's, it's, it's required, it's needed, it's owning your own success, it's understanding where your numbers are, it's helping you achieve those numbers, and it's giving me visibility so that I know what's going on. I, I do remember at one point, you know, in one of the organizations in a private equity center, you know, a couple of Harvard and MIT graduates to look at our sales numbers, and I'm talking that was a while back um, and they came in and they said dream you don't need salespeople." And i'm thinking what do you mean you don't need they said well you know what your opportunities timelines are so short they go from uh, identify to contracting and closing in such a short period and that was a problem because we did not manage our sales force our crm in a way that we entered opportunities at when they really started or parts of the planning. The sales team was entering them when they knew they're gonna close and closing them. That only demonstrated that you really didn't need salespeople. These are order takers. They came in such, such a short cycle and we all know the complexity of an enterprise sales cycle of an enterprise sales deal and what is involved in it. But it's short changing what happens. It's also not giving you that benchmark to understand 
or so that you can get guidance and understand what's happening within your deals as well as um, other teammates and other groups in, in you know, countries, different countries, looking at it from that perspective. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm really glad that you highlighted the importance of the interactions and those touch points, but also the accountability. It is your book of business and you need to really care about each of those conversations because if you're carrying multiple conversations, it's hard to remember all the details, right? We're moving quickly, we're, we're you know, as much as these tools are there, you do need to get the voice of what you thought you heard and also to rely also on your intuition, right? So. I'm really glad you brought up that accountability message and that it's it's not an option. This is uh, part of the job, right? So, has yeah, to be, exactly. has to be. Yeah. So um, just a few builds. Uh, we in our software have a very powerful data completeness layer. Uh, one of the things always in Salesforce is getting the adoption levels of using the software. And obviously when you're putting in a cadence in and you want a particular workflow and a particular logic, and you want the behaviors, you want to be able to know who's doubling down in specific areas uh, that has uh, tracking the most significant, you know, criteria that you need for data completeness. So uh, this is a very powerful view that our clients quite like. And then Reem, when you were talking about the history and the cadence, right? Uh, this is a very unique view where every single move is like playing chess, right? That you modify the close states. How many times have you changed the close state? Does that increase your odds or decrease? Do you um, add an incremental, um, you know, additional discount? Does that increase or decrease your odds of success? Is this an RFP and involved? Um, and obviously in this case, it wasn't applicable, so it's not gonna have an impact, but every single nuance of every aspect of your life cycle, science can be applied in. And I love the fact that you mentioned, you know, sales is definitely an art, but also now with large data sets, we can be a little bit more scientific and actually correlate um, you know, some of the perspectives that humans have, but also what the data patterns are that relate to um, as much history and depth uh, that we can prove out with confidence levels of 85% at the top of the funnel, which is pretty exciting. Um, so we, start, we talked a little bit about the role that coaching plays. Um, how equipped are sales professionals? Are we training them enough to be good coaches? Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And because you've obviously seen different sales professionals move into management roles, you've seen subject matter experts, but are we investing enough for salespeople to be more collaborative, more consultative, um, listen versus tell? Um, thoughts on that, Reem? Um, I think I think you nailed it, Cindy, when you said it's all about adoption. And I think it's the same thing when you look at sales managers, we move them into roles. And, and, and I was one of them. I moved into role initially, I had no clue. I was just trying to replicate my style and the way I knew success looked like. And that's how I asked the others to do it. And they're looking at me going, but that's not the way we do it. Um, it's, it's truly, I think we, there's a lot to be said about investing the time, investing the energy, as well as enabling them to have access to uh, the data and the insights so that they can coach effectively. It's, uh, it's not coaching based on, you know, the mistakes I've made in my past. It's not coaching based on what I've done in the past and what worked for me. It's coaching based on what would work in this event, what would work in this opportunity and the uh, individuals that you have. Uh, there's a lot to be said about uh, coaching in the moment. There's a lot to be said also taking the time out and looking at things and understanding um, the history and the success rate and what goes right, what goes wrong, and investing that time or taking that time uh, to make sure that you're enabling your sellers to be more effective. It's all about how fast how effective and how, how are you making sure you're prioritizing? And that's where coaching plays a huge role. Um, it's a really good a point, 
Jean, and, and I, I, as you were, I was smiling as I was internalizing what you're saying because I immediately thought of, of, of an adjective saying precision coaching, you know, because you, what you said was you stepped back and, and, and yes, you, we can talk about the stories about our own experience, what works, but it's, it's really deeply listening into that unique situation and bringing the best thought processes to advance and unlock and, and sort of that, you know, we talk about targeted selling, well, targeted coaching, precision coaching, situational leadership, um, and do we train people enough to, to be more specific uh, in building strong problem solving skills? Um, you know, I, there's so many different solution selling methodologies and coaching uh, approaches. Um, just curious on, on that front. I, I don't know if um, I, I do believe we, there's, as you said, there's a lot of methodologies out there, but I don't know if we, uh, if we take the time to uh, train sales managers to coach uh, effectively. And I do like that precision coaching, uh, uh, Cindy, that term, I like it. I'm going to use it, by the way. <laughs> but, write a book. It's a great, it's a great title. Precision. It is precision coaching, but it is. How, how do you make sure that they're efficient? How do you make sure that they're effective? Um, I don't know if we do enough of it. And I don't know that when we do it, we think we've trained them once. We think we've trained them twice a year. I don't know if that's the, uh, that, that is not the answer. It's an ongoing learning for both the seller and the sales manager, right? We expect sales managers to have all the answers to know everything. When we just promoted potentially, and I'm hoping that shifted our top performer into management. So I think there's a lot to be said there on um, on doing more, on enabling them and, and giving them access to, you know, the knowledge, the info, the insight and the training. Yeah, it's, it's very much a, an ongoing iterative learning process and a dialogue and, uh, you know, suspending judgment as well, right, uh, in the discourse. Um, so just a few things that what we've learned in uh, our supercharged uh, science uh, enablements is that, that you can surface all the wonderful analytic graphs and patterns and have a you know, Ferrari to use, but time is so critical. So we designed the software. So there's only three keystrokes ever in order to invoke an action. And we've also learned that salespeople don't always want to spend the time going through the graphs. They just want to have a specific question answered. What are my A's? Press a button. Bing. Give me them. <laughs> you know, like, feed me now. Uh, you know, tell me which opportunities are out of range. You know, uh, tell me which ones have got stale close dates. So we're really evolving to more guided selling on precision um, actions, right? And eventually, hopefully, they can just say, to the software, give me X and three words and boom, off it goes into a texting channel and informs them. So, you know, the compression of people's time and the ease of use is I think a very significant area because there is staff fatigue in the sales, um, you know, world right now, right? Where they've got, you know, so many different tools and how do you ensure that their time is used wisely, carefully, and giving them, you know, I'll just call it precision insights. I might actually use that term now for us, the precision insights kind of got a good ring to it there, Reem. But uh, yeah, so I don't know if you've got any builds on that, um, Reem, but uh, those are some of the things that we've learned is having to surface up in the moment, the insights, and then obviously starting to in the future deal with the different modalities of uh, how that information um, is accessed. I, I totally think that's brilliant. That's how we've all gotten used to uh, pressing a button then our order gets delivered the next day from Amazon. And in fact, we get disappointed now because it takes two days potentially. And we're thinking, what, what is going on with this world? Why don't I get it today? But really, honestly, that's how uh, you know, eccentric and spoiled we got. But if you think about it and you think about the convenience and this is the age of the whole experience and being able to navigate and doing things that help you. Uh, if this is, you know, the simplicity of this, the ease of use, this is huge. 
Um, and I look at also thinking about how do you create these performance measures and part of the incentive is looking at the visibility that as an organization can have visibility that can help either the, in, the individual themselves, but also the organization knowing where they are and what action has to be taken in advance. Really, Cindy, at the end of the day, we're talking December, there's two weeks left. We'd better get on those deals that need to close um, and make sure that they're the right ones that we've all invested time and energy and put the whole legal contract, everyone on so that we can make sure that they do close and that they do happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point on the legal contracting side. That's usually the area that I've seen uh, goes amok, right? Because even the clients, uh, they're trying to close their own transactions. You're trying to close the transactions with them and the pile up in legal. Uh, if you haven't really nurtured those relationships and are in the queue uh you know things usually go awry um, and uh, that's often the area that i see the most uh, complexity in uh, and choke the choke points for sure yeah i'm with you yeah so thank you reem i'm going to turn things over to to malay um just an enjoyable conversation really appreciated the storytelling and, and also all the little nuggets that you shared with us today reem I wish we could spend uh, another hour together. I know we will on other fronts, but uh, just thank you very much for being our guest today on our predictive AI world sales focus on how really to drive the most out of the productivity in the, the last three weeks. I think a lot of the comments that were shared today are just best practices, right? In terms of your point, and you got to double down for you know each quarter to really to drive the uh, you know realizing those targets and, and bringing those opportunities home. So. Thank you very much, Reem and Malay. I'm turning it back to you, our, our gracious host. Thank you, uh, Cindy, and uh, thank you, Reem, indeed. I had promised at the start of this conversation that uh, this would be an engaging one. Thank you for going one up and making it inspiring. I uh, sir, certainly do appreciate it. And um, uh, this is the, the floor is now open for anyone uh, to ask questions. I do have one uh, myself uh, and that, that deals with the, the channels that you have experienced selling on. Uh, when it comes to enterprise selling, are there any tips or best practices you can share uh, with us, Reem, on how you go about the channel management when it comes to enterprise selling? And, and when you're talking about channel, you're talking about through partners? Um, yes. Okay. Wow. It's a, it's a great question, because really, when you think about uh, how you sell and you sell through and, and who do you leverage, and, and in all my sales, it's always been, uh, you know, in the last role was selling through brokers that they were white labeling and taking the services and, and adding them. How do you make sure you're incenting them when you're not in control of that last mile? Right. So how do you close those deals? So coming up with ways that you can influence an opportunity and drive. What if you can arm them with the same data? What if you can arm them with that competitive knowledge? I think that would be huge for any uh, partner or channel that you're uh, leveraging to sell, uh, you know, to, cl to close your gap. Um, love that. But also partners that you take their product and they refer business back to you. And that's the, that you're the channel. I think that's another huge area of uh, making sure that you're truly focusing on ones that you're not just driven by that OEM or partner uh, because they need to close their numbers. But I mean, not because they need to close, because that's what they think they can get, but truly making sure that it's qualified and it makes sense so that you're putting the energy around it. Um, there's also making sure that you're reaching out into your customer base and saying, do you have a friend that wants something tomorrow that because we've been servicing and delighting you and we've provided such a great experience that we can uh, leverage you for a uh, you know, another contact. Um, I do want to caution that another contact that you're opening the doors uh, today might not lead in a closed deal tomorrow, but in the same token, it's all about um, thinking, you know, maybe in the year end spending 90% of your time on closing immediate deals, but, you know, 
Q1 comes and you'll have to think about the whole year and it starts all over again. You got to love it. It's, it's a great world we live in. Right, right. Very true. And um, interesting uh, that you, you talked about uh, the, the data sharing piece. There's this choice, as you know, of course, is, is an AI solution. Uh, that leverages data in the CRM. And one thing that we often notice uh, in our audience and uh, with our clients or even prospects is that there's a, there's a real problem when it comes to stack fatigue and that uh, refers to solutions, whether inbuilt or bought that you may use to leverage the data that you have access to. Um, is there any advice or just any, any experience you can share on how to avoid that when you go about making those strategic decisions? Um, I think you're referring to adding, are you referring to adding more tools and technologies? Yes. yes. I, I truly am a huge believer that um, this is the, where the value of what you're bringing forward uh, when you talk about how you're enabling, how you're empowering, how you're giving uh, sellers access to data that allows them to make more money, it's simple, mm -hmm. uh, create more value. I think this is where you'll drive that adoption. Um, I was thinking the other day of, uh, I don't know if, you know, habit stacking, how do you create with with the CRM, how do you create habit stacking so that you know they leave a meeting, now they can talk to and update their CRM via voice command instead of getting in a car and calling, I don't know who you're calling or turning on the music, the habit becomes you jump in the car or Uber and you're talking to your CRM and figuring out how do you create those habit stacking so that it becomes part of that discipline to help them help me. And, and also clients want you to be on top of your game. They expect you to be on top of your game. They do want to buy from someone that has a handle, follows up on the right timelines, remembers the last conversation, shares insight based and doesn't ask them to repeat. All of those are critical to be sitting in, in, a, in a database, in a CRM in a mechanism that allows you to leverage it so that you're smarter, better, more efficient. Wow, that, that is a really, really crucial point you made because uh, so many of the sellers focus on the value their solution can bring um, to a customer's pain points, but forget to talk about the value that the customers in turn can bring to their customers. So that is that is a very crucial piece uh, to take note of. Um, I have, I'm sure uh, everyone at Sales Choice has for sure. Um, but Reem, thank you so much once again for taking us uh, through these pointers. They are most helpful, especially in these final days of the quarter and year. Um, can we move to the next slide? So this brings us to a close um, on this session. As always, uh, the predictive world is designed to educate the audience with rich insights and discussions around sales and AI. And just to reiterate for everyone listening in, you can view our webinar videos, podcasts, white papers, even find our blog channel at saleschoice.com slash resources. And we remain keen and open to any uh, interests on featuring on this channel, as well as any feedback or bills or opinions on what else you would like to see us uh, feature over the course of the next year. Um, with that, I would like to uh, say adieu to everyone. And a big thank you to Reem. If you would like to contact us or learn more about us, you can reach out to us at saleschoice.com slash contact hyphen us. And of course, all information is there on the website. If you'd like to connect with Reem, we will be uploading a recording of this video on our website. And you will be able to see Reem's Twitter handles. And you can, of course, reach out to her on LinkedIn as well. Reem, any final words uh, from you? Thank you so much, and uh, I appreciate you having me on uh, the pot, on the webinar. Um, it is my favorite topic. It's and I love the fact that you're helping uh, 
sales organizations helping us be more scientific and predictive and improving our probability. So, so love that aspect and, and we need it and we're grateful for it. So thank you. Well, it, it makes it all worth it to do. Uh, Cindy, any words so from you before we wrap up? No, just thank you very much, Reem. Just really appreciate your time and to all of those listening in because it's December and it is crunch time. Happy holidays and go knock those opportunities out and close them. Best wishes. Nothing more to say. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.